everyone. We're going to start with, uh, sorry, let me know when I can. Oop. We good to go, Eowyn? Yeah? Yep. Yep. Right. It's live. Thank you very much. All right. I want to welcome everybody to our March 25th meetings. Um, we're going to start off today with the uh, source protection meeting, get that one dealt with. So I will officially call the meeting to order and ask for a certification of quorum. Yes, we have more than 50% of the members present. Okay. And I don't have any remarks at this time, just other than to say, welcome everyone. And uh, let's have a fantastic meeting today. So there's that. So I have a motion that the agenda for the Source Protection Authority meeting be approved as circulated, moved by Bernie, seconded by Kathy. Any comments, questions, any opposed? That one is carried, thank you. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing and hearing none, previous minutes. Motion that the minutes of the Source Protection Authority meeting of November 26, 2021 be approved as circulated. Moved by Ian, seconded by Marcus. Any opposed? Carried, thank you. No business, no delegations, all the way through to reports. So we're, we're appointing a representative here. I'm gonna read the motion and see if there's any questions here. Motion that the Grand River Source Protection Authority appoint John Sepolis as a municipal representative for group number one, which is Wellington, Dufferin, Southgate and Holland to the Lake Erie Source Protection Committee for a term of appointment that expires in May, 2023 as recommended by the Lake Erie Management Committee. Are there any comments or comments? Any questions? All right, can I get a move? Bruce, did you go ahead? Well, Bruce, well, you just muted yourself. You went the wrong way. There we go. Okay. I'm back again. Just a, a clarification at the bottom of the page, his name changes to John Sepolis Davis. And is that a, an error or should that be corrected? I'll let staff look at that. I don't, I, I think it's probably an error. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, it's Martin Keller here at GRCA. Uh, yes, I just uh, noticed that this morning as well. This is a typo. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. You should not say Davis. Good catch, Bruce. They were trying to sneak somebody onto the board. <laughs> well, I, they changed names pretty quickly, but I didn't think they should. And uh, thanks uh -huh. very much, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you, sir. So can I get a mover for this, please? Moved by Brian, second by Sue. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. And that, my friends, motion that the Source Protection Authority meeting be adjourned. Moved by Jerry, seconded by Joe. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you very much. So we'll just move right along to the general membership meeting. We can officially call the meeting to order and I'll redo quorum, Karen. Yes, we have more than 50% of the members present. Okay, so we'll go right to agenda. Motion that the agenda for the general membership meeting be approved as circulated. Moved by John, seconded by Marcus. Any opposed? That is approved. That is carried, I mean. Any declarations of pecuniary interest? Hearing and seeing none. Motion that the minutes of the annual general meeting of February 25th, 2022 be approved as circulated. Moved by Bernie, seconded by Joe. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. So moving right down to correspondence, we have three letters there. Um, before I get to the motion, I'll just walk through each if there's any questions and then we can do the motion. So the first one is a uh, clarification around the chair and, and vice chair term limits. Are there any comments or questions on that one? Good to go. Second is John Kemp, giant hogweed mitigation. Does staff want to touch on that? Uh, sure, through you, Mr. Chair. So we will be preparing a response to Mr. Kemp. You may recall that he came to the board twice last year concerning the giant hogweed. The position of the GRCA is we do um, deal with giant hogweed on property that we own. However, it is a municipal and provincial um, issue from a need perspective. So we do have information on our website with links to all of the municipalities that have provided their information in terms of contacts for their weed inspectors. Um, but basically our response is going to thank him for providing the information um, and to direct him to the appropriate 
authorities um, responsible for managing noxious weeds. Okay. Any comments? Everybody all right? Is it clear enough? Okay, Bruce, go ahead. Whale. Yeah, yes, thank you again, Mr. Chair, and through you. I I know this is is territory that it's not totally our responsibility, but I see this poor gentleman desperately trying to to do what's the right thing to do and not knowing how to get the cooperation of people who have property along the Grand or or farmers that may be close enough to the Grand, it's an issue, but th this is a bad noxious weed. And I don't know if we don't get ahead of it somehow, uh, we are gonna pay a price in two to three years time as, as the population multiplies. So I don't know what else we can do, but I would certainly encourage staff to do whatever they can to communicate with uh, either our member municipalities and give them some guidance in terms of how they can deal with residents in their municipality to help them deal with it on their properties and also to cooperate with with the efforts that this other group is uh, is doing so i i know it's not a big agricultural problem but it certainly will be if it ever migrates into agricultural land because it's it's uh, very poisonous to, uh, to both humans and to livestock and it it's I guess it's not difficult to control if you do it at the right time of year, but if it gets beyond that early stage, then it's a very difficult one to handle just because of the toxicity and the it's like the poison ivy effects that you have when you, you do handle it. So those would just be my suggestions that we, we do as much as we can do to help them out with this. Okay, thanks, Bruce. And I see your hands up, Sue. I, I just want to make a couple comments and nobody, I think everybody on the board would agree with what you said. Bruce, about you know the problem with this weed. The difficulty is we don't have the resources, nor are, do we have the authority to begin to go on other people's lands or direct them what to do. This is similar to the moth issue we had. It's really not our mandate, and I'm not trying to pass a buck. I'm just being realistic. In the county of Wellington, for example, as you know, we have a weed inspector. And if somebody has a weed issue, they need to go through the weed inspector municipally. So it really needs to be a municipal and provincial uh, dealt uh, matter dealt with, and I'm sure in the correspondence back, we will indicate that. We just can't, it's just, if it's on somebody else's property, it's not a GR, it's not, how do I say this? We can't deal with it. We don't have the authority. We don't have the resources. It needs to be either ministry or your local weed inspectors dealing with it. So we can pass that information back and advise them. Now, I know this gets buck passed, right? Some municipalities say, well, it's not ours, but the, the, the actual reality is the GRC has defined properties and on those defined properties, we deal with the issue. Once it's off our property, we, we don't have the authority to deal with it. So um, I'm not saying that makes the problem any better. I'm just, people need to go to deal with the, the, the sources, the people who can actually deal with it. And I believe in our case, in the County of Wellington, it's, it's the weed inspector and that's, that's their role. And each municipality should probably have that. I'm not sure what the provincial legislation is. Ultimately, they can go to their MPP to try to figure out, you know, what the province is, is lining out for that. Just a thought, Sue. Um, yeah, and I don't disagree with you, um, Chris or Bruce. Um, what it is, is it's an education piece that people forget every year. And every year it has to be redone. Whether we Facebook and tweet out um, that uh, this exists again, please keep your eyes on it and contact your municipality. Or whether we reach out to the municipalities and say, hey, let's put something on Facebook and social media telling people about giant hogweed again, refresh their memories, something that should happen automatically every year. And if we decide GRCA not to do it, then each of us represents a municipality. Let's contact our own municipality, say, get that information out. Because people move into the areas and out of the areas so quickly that they may not know about or recognize or have forgotten. And I think it's a gentle reminder, whether GRCA does it on Facebook as, as a gentle reminder in Twitter, or whether we as, as individuals approach our municipality and say, can you do this? I don't care who does it, but I think it should get done. Thank you, Sue. Bernie? If I may, it is present in the Dunville Marsh. I think I brought it up before. So if it's on our property, we should deal with it. Yeah, if anybody sees any um, issues on GRCA lands, let staff know and we'll go out and get it. That's That absolutely is our responsibility. 
Okay, so a little complicated, but is there anything further on that one? And we will be responding to Mr. Camp. And then the third item is the uh, meetings available to the public. So uh, Bernie mentioned at the beginning, I'm not sure if everybody was on the call. Clearly, well, hopefully it looks like the pandemic may be winding down. One never knows. Um, I think most of the provincial requirements are leaving at the end of April. Now, different jurisdictions and different people are doing different things. I noticed in many businesses, they're keeping the mask mandated. I guess it's becoming a, a local scenario. So we're going to stay virtual for April and May because April, we still have some restrictions in place and we do have physical limitations in the chamber, et cetera. So what we've asked staff to do is come back in May with some options on how we're gonna deal with this going forward. I think clearly now that we're, we've done this virtually and frankly, to some degree at, at, well, not to some, it absolutely seems to work. So I'm sure there'll be some consideration for the new technologies going forward. But in terms of her letter, um, our meetings are recorded and put up on the website, et cetera. So we will, we will respond to her, but for the board itself, we will, the staff will come back in May and say, here's, here's where we are, here's the reality, here's what we're looking at, and, and then we'll have a, a discussion with the board members. Is that, any thoughts on that from anyone? Okay, so uh, direction back to staff is we'll stay virtual to end, end in May, and then we'll come back with a, a report on how we're going to conduct our meetings going forward, assuming we don't get another variant by then. All right, so, if there's nothing further for the correspondence, I'm gonna read a motion that the correspondence from the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks regarding clarification of requirements for chair and vice chair term limits and rotations and from John Kemp regarding giant hogweed mitigation and from Carolyn Forrester regarding live board meetings available to the public be received as information. Moved by Joan, seconded by Bruce Banbury. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Moving right into reports. So 12.1, I'll put it on the floor. Motion that report number GM 03 28 cash and investment status, February 2022 be received as information. Moved by Richard, seconded by Jerry. Comments or questions? Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Next 12.2, motion that the financial summary for the period ending February 28th 2022 be approved. Moved by John, seconded by Marcus. Comments or questions? That is carried, thank you. Next 12.3, boiler replacement. Motion that the Grand River Conservation Authority award the tender for the administration center boiler replacement at 400 Clyde Road to LJ Barton of Hamilton. Ontario for the amount of 319,000 excluding HST and that a total budget of 350,000 excluding HST be approved. Moved by Kathy, seconded by Les. Bernie. If I may, these uh, three items, C, D and E, give us tendered amounts. And I'm trying to get some yardstick as to where they are in terms of our budget and our estimates. Thank you, Bernie. Sam, who's going to take this? Karen? Um, so I, I know Brandon is on the call, as is Sonia. All of these fit within um, our approved budget. Um, I'm trying to think of the three separately. Uh, with respect to the boiler replacement tender, um, our consultant did indicate that this was in line with what they are seeing um, in other boiler replacement projects elsewhere. So they felt that that was well within what was expected uh, in terms of the cleaning services. Again, um, not significantly, a very minor increase over prior years, which could be attributed to inflationary factors and road surface treatment, again, very minor increase. So well within budget and within what was expected. Does that do it, Bernie? Okay, good, thanks. Sue? Thank you, and through you, Chair, um, through you to the staff, maybe in a report coming forward in the future, we always state in the comment, this falls within budget, or the budget was this amount. So we see the difference right there in the report. 
um, that's how I like to see it done so that we are clear as to where we're at. Okay, so thank you uh, for the recommendation. Sonia? Um, hello, Mr. Chair. I've got some connectivity, so my camera's off. Sure. Uh, it does state, I'm just trying to, in the package, um, it does clarify about budget on page 28 or on page 31 of 53 or page 28, uh, according to Eowyn's numbering, that um, we may need to draw on the reserves a bit with regards to the head office. We did put 350,000 in the budget, but as we always know how these projects tend to maybe overlap between years. So we will keep our eyes and then get delayed or whatnot. So, um, if they, move, if they all were to move along and get done this year, we would want to dip into our uh, building a mechanical equipment reserve. But right now, uh, our guess, as Karen says, is that we may still stay within budget for this year, depending on the timing of these projects. So we, did, we do try to make the effort to uh, speak to our budget position there. Thank you, Sonia. And I, I mean, we all know we're dealing with budgets that it, this is going to be a, a tough and weird year. We've had several road projects and culverts and stuff come through that are going up and over budget already, right? Because of the inflation. So we'll have to keep a tight eye on where we're going. Are there any further comments on 12.3, the boiler? Okay. I, so I'm, I apologize. Did I get a, a mover for that? You did, Kathy, and Les. Excellent. Are there any opposed? that motion that is carried thank you moving on to 12-4 motion that the grand river conservation authority retain sqm janitorial services incorporated to provide cleaning services at the administration center for a, a term of three years and that a total budget of 160,000, excluding hsd be approved which includes a three-year assignment and a contingency for additional cleaning services can i get a mover for that move by richard second by jim any comments, questions? Any opposed? That motion is carried, thank you. 12-5 motion the grant, that the Grand River Conservation Authority award the tender for the 2022 road surface treatments to Cornell Construction Limited of Brantford, Ontario, up to the amount of $247,500, excluding HST, and that a total project budget of $275,000, excluding HST, be approved. Moved by Richard, second by Joan. Comments, questions? Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Moving on to 12-6. Motion that the Grand River Conservation Authority appoint Paige Petto and Carter McCrossan as Provincial Offenses Act officers to enforce section 29 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Can I get a mover for that, please? Moved by Les, seconded by Jane. Comments, questions? Uh, Warren, do you have a comment, question? Or are you triple moving it? Triple moving it, okay. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Moving along to 12-7. Motion that the Grand River Conservation Authority appoint Megan Irwin and Daniel Jackman as Provincial Act officers to enforce section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Moved by Ian, seconded by Warren. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Motion, 12-8. Motion that report number GM 0322, uh, well, yeah, sorry. GM 0322 Grand River Watershed Flood Warning System be received as information. Moved by John, seconded by Marcus. Comments or questions? Okay, any opposed? That one is carried, thank you. Current watershed conditions. Uh, does Dwight have some comments or where are we doing? Any thoughts, Sam? Sure, Dwight's on the line if he has any, anything he wants to add. Yeah, just a couple of comments. Obviously, uh, we're working through the melt cycle right now. The watershed's been very active over the last two weeks. We've had flood warnings and flood watches out. Currently, we're not experiencing any floodings. Flow is between the banks. 
and we're regulating flows, finding the balance to fill the reservoirs and maintain our flood control storage. So uh, you've likely seen many uh, reservoir operations over the past week as we uh, slowly uh, move water through the reservoirs and start our filling cycle to get up to our April 1st levels. Um, typically we require rainfall and snow melt to, to fill to April 1st. And then to move up to May 1st, we rely on rainfall. There is some uh, lake effect snow that's potentially gonna be coming in this weekend. And uh, we'll complete a snow survey next week. And again, adjust reservoir levels uh, as needed if we need to uh, add a bit more flood control storage, depending on how much we, snow we get this weekend. Um, so with that, I'll turn it uh, back to the chair. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Nice update, Richard. Yes, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate uh, this this report, and it's very helpful. Uh, if there's any issue within our area, I post it on Facebook and share it with the constituents, and I, as I'm sure all board members do it. It's very helpful, and I really appreciate the the depth and quality of these reports. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Les. Yeah, I just want to thank Dwight for the the magic that he's working because we've uh, been dodging a lot of bullets here in in, in uh, Wilmot and New Hamburg. So we appreciate all his hard work at uh, keeping the water within the banks. Thank you, Dwight. Thanks, Les. Uh, okay, I'll put the motion on the floor. Motion that report number GM 032233 current watershed conditions as of March 16, 2022, be received as information. Moved by Les, seconded by Jane. Any further comments? Um, all right, any opposed? That is carried. Thank you, Dwight, for keeping us up to date as usual. Um, we're moving right along. Uh, Warren, I'm right down to other business, if you can believe it. It's a bit of a, <laughs> Les, did you have, that's just a residual, I'm guessing. Good morning, uh, members Good morning, of the morning, Warren. I'll turn the floor over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Chair White. Um, this morning, I would like to acknowledge the work that has been done by Eva Salter. Many of you in the southern part of the watershed will know the name Eva Salter, a regional development advisor in the St. Catherine's Office of the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture. Eva has worked for the Ontario Public Service for the past 32 and a half years and will be retiring on April the 1st, 2022. For over 30 years, Eva has provided advice and guidance to the culture, sport, recreation, citizenship, immigration, and seniors sectors in the counties of Haldeman and Norfolk, County of Brent, Six Nations, First Nation, uh, the Mississauga of the New Credit, where she has been a community builder. She has served her geographic territory with enthusiastic dedication, for which she has been an invaluable resource to the ministry's policy development and program delivery teams, as well as inter-ministry committees. For her deep knowledge, creative thinking, inclusiveness, and reali reliability has helped re realize a large number of significant and exciting initiatives. This included a leadership role in the 1994 designation of the Grand River as the 18th Canadian Heritage River and the establishment of a public private sector heritage working group that developed and implemented strategic strategies to promote appreciation and protection of the Grand River. Eva was a key member of the annual Heritage Day workshops. Eva received a Heritage River Award in 2014 from the Grand River Conservation Authority. Eva has also been involved in the establishment of the Central Ontario Network for Black History, which has led to increased education and cultural tourism to Ontario's underground railroad sites. Eva was instrumental in the, the identification and development of the Municipal Cultural Planning MCP as a ministry priority, which has fueled the cultural vitality of more than 70 Ontario municipalities. In 2015, Eva received the Applause Award for Service Excellence, one of the highest accolades an Ontario public service can receive. On your behalf, 
I would like to take this opportunity to recognize Eva for her many years of dedication to the Grand River as a Canadian Heritage River and wish her well in her retirement. She will be missed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Warren. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. A little round of applause there. Appreciate that. If there is nothing further, we will move into closed. I have a motion that the general membership enter a closed meeting in accordance with the Municipal Act, Section 239, for the following purposes, proposed or pending acquisition. Or that is carried. So, Eowyn, you want to bring us back out? Maybe my phone will stop talking. Yep, it's back on. Okay, um, so I wanna welcome everybody back to our open session. Coming out of the close, we do have one motion. Motion, in order to further the objects of the Grand River Conservation Authority by assisting a school board in providing services, therefore be it resolved that the Grand River Conservation Authority grant an easement over a portion of lands described as part of lot 14, plan 591, city of Kitchener, region of Waterloo, being part of pin 2271360-67, being parts four and seven, 58R, 213-118, in favor of the Waterloo Catholic District School Board for access, installation and maintenance of servicing infrastructure, fencing, grading and landscaping for the nominal consideration of $2. Okay, can I get a mover for that, please? Moved by Warren, seconded by Ian. Comments, questions? Any opposed? That is carried. All right, well, short and sweet today. I wanna to thank everyone for coming up and uh, have a good rest of, well, now it's spring. So we'll all be back in shiny and all tanned by April, I'm sure. So with that, can I get a motion to adjourn? Moved by Richard, second by Marcus. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you all very soon. Take care, everybody. Sam, do you wanna give me a call? Sure, yep. Okay.